Hey guys, welcome back to Lords of Pharaohs. I'm Sir Duke, and we're going to be continuing on with Cleopatra 2. We're going into the second campaign because the last mission, setting the valley, concluded the Valley of the Kings. Um, not too difficult, it was mostly monument building in that one, but this time we're going to be doing a bit more of historical stuff. A bit more of it, anyway. Ramses II is third in a dynastic line begun by his grandfather, Ramses I, a vizier of non royal blood who claimed the throne when Hormheb left no descendant. You need to achieve military triumphs and construct great monuments that will convince your subjects of your godlike status, fill your enemies with despair, and proclaim Ramses the Great's name and the glory of Egypt for generations to come. It's quite an interesting campaign. We're going to go through quite a number of very interesting factual things. Well, what is supposedly factual, but twisted a little bit for game mechanics. Let's head to the first mission. Governor, regent of the Levant, and loyal subject of our pharaoh, the son of Ra. It is indeed fortunate to live in this time when Egypt's benevolent hand stretches from the far reaches of Nubia to the shores of the Levant. Infinite is the wisdom of our new pharaoh, the most revered Ramses II, and great is his vision, for it is he that has dispatched you to rule in this fine land, now part of the ever-expanding domain of Egypt. This region, while still fraught with dangers, has many riches that must be exploited. The verdant hills are ripe with tall trees yielding fine wood, ideal for fashioning chariots and useful in many forms of construction. Seams of copper, while not abundant, can also be found and will be most useful in fashioning strong weapons. Wood and copper, so rare in our homeland, will surely be welcomed when shipped back in quantity. It is therefore entrusted that you will oversee the establishment of a mighty port of commerce, from which these valuable commodities can be exported. Pharaoh and the people of Egypt will be most grateful. But take care. Ensure that your own trusted soldiers are equipped with fast chariots and strong weapons, for the Hittites, though smitten by Seti, father of Pharaoh, are still dangerous and may challenge our rightful authority in this bountiful land. A strong military presence in this new territory may be necessary to quell insurrection, and will undoubtedly be most useful in the future. Finally, to remind the people of this region to whom they must now pay homage, Pharaoh Ramses II deems it appropriate that you erect an obelisk proclaiming his glories. How interesting, we're going to be building an old Pharaoh monument, an obelisk, only a small one apparently because it's only a monument rating of 6, but we're here in Sumer, the lands of the Levant, and that's sort of the same area as Byblos, so for some reason, apparently, in the time period between when we were building Byblos and this mission, all the coppers disappeared. Or we're in another region of the Levant that has very little copper. But population 3,000, prosperity 40, culture 35, but look at that, kingdom rating 90. One thing to note is that quite a lot of these Cleopatra missions will ask you to achieve very high kingdom ratings. So we're going to have to make sure we keep people happy. Um, quite a lot of trees, maybe some other things that we can export. Probably some military from the uh, Hittites, but we will look at that later. Uh, continue on hard mode. Let's head to the city. Slow time down and pause. So we're here. This is the Kingdom Road right here. Looks at these little lines. The normal climate um, predator. Yeah, predator uh, in Cleopatra. Here's the coast. Not a lot of it, but there is a bit there. Now, one thing to notice again, uh, the map developers love to put in reeds. There is a ton of reeds that we can't harvest on this map. They're all going to cause a malaria risk. Plenty of trees though, but it looks as if there's not a lot. There's lots of trees, but they're quite far away. Not a lot of dock space either. We may have to cross onto this little island here, so I'm not too sure how we're going to do it. Because there isn't a lot of space. We've got a recruiter, we've got basics to make uh, chariots, at least we don't have to import wood or anything. Uh, infantry chariots, no archers. And the briefing does uh, allude to a little feature of uh, Cleopatra, which we will see in the next mission. Gods are Ra and Ptah, and Ra is most likely the patron. In fact, Ra will probably be the patron of all of these missions because of Ramses II being such a Ra fan, effectively. Uh, yeah, just a small obelisk. We have to import that granite though because we can't uh, quarry that here. Um, where's the copper? Okay, so I see a little bit of copper there, so I can put one copper mine there. And another two there. What? I know they said it's not abundant, but 
three mines is all we get? That is pathetic. Um, obviously we're not going to be um, using too much of that, we're going to be selling it, I think. Um, town Palace. Uh, fishing boats are the only things we can build. So no warships, so at least we're not going to have a sea attack. Um, not a lot of space to put these buildings down though. Not a lot of space. So we're not going to get a whole load of uh, fishing. Might be able to get uh, quite a bit up here and then have mostly docks down here. What are our raw media sources? Wood and copper, as expected. We can import jewellery, um, well, gems and linen, um, flax driver, I keep saying the finished goods. So we could probably sell that. So we're here at Sewer. We've already got a trade route open with Kadesh. Uh, they sell ivory and oil. They also buy things we can't make. We can import flax and make linen. <coughs> Pardon me. And Comey sells wood, copper, oil, and they buy linen. Um, Jericho sells oil, buys linen. There's a lot of people want to buy linen, apparently, but we're going to have to import flax. Um, copper can be sold from Timna as well as gems. They also buy linen again. Roarty sells lettuce, pottery, beer, linen, and buys copper and wood, so we could sell that. Menefer sells grain, chickpeas, pottery, flax, which is used on a lot of papyrus. They also buy weapons. Uh, wooden stuff that we can't make. Uh, Wast down here sells us flax and granite. And they also buy weapons and wood. And I don't think there's anything else on this map, no. Lots of water trade though. There's only a few land trade routes, there's a lot of water trade routes. And of course, as with Cleopatra, they put all the required resources that you need, like pottery and beer, on water trade routes. Now we can get quite a bit of pottery. We can get, what is that, 4,000 pottery? Yeah, 4,000 pottery and only 2,500 beer, which is not a lot, but we can honor Ra, and I suppose we can get his blessing. We don't start with a lot of funds either, we only start with 5,500 uh, 5, rather. So we could probably do a flax import export, we're going to have to import pottery and beer directly. What's the prosperity rating again? 40. So we are going to need to get up past beer level, so we're going to have to make that efficient or we're going to have to just help get Raz help. Um, I don't know what we need to import oil for because um, there's no paint maker, uh, lamp makers, so it's just a complete waste. Um, okay, so I've got an idea of how I'm going to do this. Probably going to just do some blocks. Not sure how I'm gonna do. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do straight lines or just big blocks. Might do a little bit of a nine by nine, maybe a couple of larger blocks over here. We don't need a lot of population. Unfortunately, we need three thousand people, but there's not much that we can really employ them with. It's only really woodcutters, a bit of a military industry up here, and that's about it. So yeah, I think I've got an idea of how I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna go and plan a housing area. We're probably gonna just colonize this area straight away because this is where all the, the resources are. We can't build any stuff down here. So the game's pretty much forcing us to build a bridge here. So yeah, let's uh, plan out the first housing block and I'll come back in once we've done it. Okay, so this is what we've gone for. So we're gonna have basically two nine by nines. I'm probably going to put the other one over here somewhere. I'm not too sure where I'm going to put the other one. But here we're going to have a nine by nine and our wooden flax and all that stuff down here. Uh, over here we're just going to have a disconnected little area for military and this is just going to support building uh, chariots and inventory because that's pretty much all we've got. Uh, mostly all chariots. We're going to have five charioteer companies but we're going to have one infantry company. There is a reason for that and it's because of the next mission. But we'll talk about that in the next mission because I'd rather not spoil why we need an infantry for in this one. Um, unfortunately, one thing you will notice, we don't have walls and towers. So this time we have to fight the Hittites, because there will be a, an eventual invasion. We have to fight the Hittites without any kind of uh, backup for walls and towers. So we're going to have to directly engage them, which is not very useful. And it does mean I'm going to have to know where they come from. Now I do know that there's an invasion point up here and an invasion point over here, so that's how we're going to go for it. We've got a couple of forts over here and a couple of forts over there, but that's not priority right now. Again, I've made sure to place the houses in a certain way. These houses have been placed first, then these ones, and then the main housing block has been built second. And yeah, I've left space. And this area between this housing block, this 9x9, and this wood area, will be for storage and 
distribution and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not too sure I'm going to do it, but it's not priority right now. I may even put it in the middle, I'm not too sure where I'll put the second block, but that's okay. You can see the cadet traders are already going through. Um, they don't do anything. We don't really need them because they only sell oil, which we don't really need. Um, there are requests for it though. I, I will say this though. There are requests... <coughs> pardon me. There are requests for things you can only import and you can't produce yourself. Um, so be aware of that. But it's not going to be a concern. And I have gone ahead and put down the apothecaries and all that in every single block. We do need them because of all these little one tile bits of marshland and of course down here as well. Now water trade is very heavily required on this one. Um, good thing is that we don't need to replace any ships because there are no... There's no warships or anything so it's not like they're going to be destroyed. So we can just put in a, a shipwright somewhere. Make it build all the fishing boats that we need and then delete the, the shipwright. Now of course we would need the shipwright back if we end up destroying a, a fishing wharf or allowing it to catch fire or whatever. But for the most part we don't really need too many um, shipwrights so this way we just need one to build up as many um, fishing boats as we can and then that'll be fine. Now one thing to know is that we can import three other food types. We are going to need to import a lot of food uh, because fish on its own will not cut it. Unfortunately, the, the problem is, is that uh, the food types, the additional food types that we can get, all come from cities that also sell various other things. For example, Roarty sells lettuce, but they also sell pottery and beer. Manifair sells grain and chickpeas, but they also sell pottery and flax and papyrus as well. Wast sells grain, but they also sell flax and granite. So, importing food, yes, works, but it's going to tie up the dock for everything else. So we are going to slow down on these kind of things like flax. We can import 5,000 flax a year, which means we could sell 5,000 linen a year. I don't think we could sell that much though. Actually, we could sell more than that. We could sell like 9,000 linen a year, which is quite a lot. And we can also sell 6,000 wood a year. So I'm not too sure how we're going to do this. I'll probably go with a land trade route and then just open up any other trade route that buys a commodity that I can sell. Uh, I will probably trade with Men Nefer first because they sell flax and buy wood, which is at least useful. So yeah, that's a rundown of how I'm going to do things. Um, we do have to rush a little bit because there are attacks planned. Not for a while, but there are attacks that are going to happen. But we do need to get export uh, industry set up because we're about to run out of money. And we are going to get rescue funds, don't worry about that. But uh, we do need to get a hurry on with it. So let's just continue on and I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, this is very early. It's only the third month we've been playing, but already we're getting uh, a gift of food from Men Nefer. We can get 1600 baskets of grain. I'm actually going to accept that. We're going to put it here. Uh, mainly because we can just get a jump start on feeding our people, which will give us more um, employment. So we are going to just put down this. We're not going to buy up anything other than grain. Um, I was also considering about where I'm going to put the ship right. I'm going to put it here because I will want a dock there anyway. Um, later on that is. Uh, let's just see. One, two, three. I need to destroy that and that. Let me just check. One, two, three. Yeah. That's going to come round the back like so. Um, the reason being is that we are going to have, uh, we're going to need a lot of warehouses. Now, I did say that most of the water trade, uh, most of the required routes are by water, and that's why we're going to need a lot of warehouses. Because we're going to need to have as much, uh, as close to the docks as possible without destroying trees, obviously. Um, if we have too many things, say, over here, the dock's going to get tied up going all the way across the map trying to get stuff here. And it's just going to clog up the docks. We have too many water trade routes to allow that to happen. We've got one, two, three of them, which all need to be open. We need granite from Wast. Um, we don't, I mean, we need papyrus from Manefer, but we don't technically need that as a resource. We do need raw arty anyway. So it is a, a bit of a, it is a bit of a, what would um, uh, another player would say, is a bit of a shit fight because we need so much stuff there here to stop them wandering all across the map to get something because that's not going to help. Um, we are going to export weapons later but I'm going to have it disconnected because otherwise if I connect this area all the way over here, the dot workers that want to go and buy weapons are going to go all the way up across all of my roads to get one weapon. They only buy one weapon at a time, they don't buy 
four at a time, like say uh, copper and all that. So we don't want these guys wandering all the way across up here to go get something, because that's just going to be bad. Um, so let's just see. Uh, I want to just check some one, two, three. I want to just put down one, two. Um, let's see, one, two, three. Four. Should do that. We need more housing, apparently. Um, we'll just put that there, and then we can just do firehouse. Um, I'm going to try and get rid of some of the uh, res uh, things that we have because we have too many of these service buildings, in my opinion. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to delete that apothecary, and we're just going to delete the apothecary that's up here. Um, we don't really need to provide these guys with malaria access or malaria. Um, services. Uh, really, I would just rather them die off and re um, rethingy themselves. So we're going to save some money by not having these expensive bills. I will have a malaria dude here at this apothecary. At least that's useful. What's our unemployment like? 69 uh, missing people. Let's just lower this tax requirement. The dog's working, but we can't really do much with that. What I'm going to do is with the funds that we have left, we're just going to put down one, two, three, four of those to start collecting some wood. Um, and then we will open up the tribute to Men Nefer. At least they sell flax and buy wood. At least that's a, a viable uh, import export. So we're getting things going. I uh, will accept that gift when it comes in. And we'll just keep on going. We'll start to feed our people with some um, free grain, basically. That's all it is. It's just free grain. Okay, this is not good. Straight away, we're already being asked to uh, uh, send something to men. If, uh, now, presumably because of me accepting that 1,600 baskets of grain gift, we now need to send some copper in, in one year. We don't even have that running because we don't have workers for it. Uh, we did turn off the industry, so I'm going to have to somehow get some copper made rather quickly. What we're going to do is we're going to toggle off the wood industry and toggle the copper industry back on. I did open up the tribute to men effort so that the grain will be used. But um, we only got a bit of rescue funds. We only got 1500 rescue funds. So we're going to go into debt very soon again, which is not very useful. Um, so let's see if we can make the copper in time. Very sneaky, very early, I have to admit, for a request. Um, yeah, um, let's just put the copper. Let's see. There. I can put it there, but I can accept all copper. And we've only got three mines, so we can't really expand this. I mean, I can't put a copper mine anywhere else, not there. It just doesn't count. And there's no other seams of copper on this map. Anywhere. It's pretty dire, that's what I would say. It's just really bad. And one thing to note, I will say this now, this is the last mission where you can mine copper. And uh, There's no more mining copper missions after this. Um, so yeah, uh, what if he's not feeling to roll for uh, desirability? Okay, that's, that's not a problem. We will start to feed people, at least we've got some grain, at least get them evolving. Which will help with our unemployment issues as well. And Patar's a little upset. We'll give him a temple, I think. We can only build two temples anyway, so we might as well just put it down. And then we can just put down these shrines wherever I can find a space for them. We'll just do one shrine there and um, we'll just do another shrine to the ta over here so we should be able to make the 600 copper very quickly there's only three mines so that's just another two loads and then we should be fine and once that's going then we can uh, turn on the wood industry again start to make some money because we're about to hit debt uh, very quickly i'll admit so yeah i'll meet that copper request and i'll come back in if anything of interest happens we've now got 500 people in this city apparently Okay, so the wood's starting to stockpile, but I got 600 wood in stockpile, which is pretty good. It's another significant debt. We're importing the grain and selling wood, which has just brought us into the black, which is great. And then we sold another 300 wood. As long as we're just selling little bits of wood, it'll be fine. We don't need to max out. As long as we are selling something, it's it's money. Um, we're not going to have a ton of wood cars because we don't need that many because there's not a lot of trees. Because they are going to start to get really efficient when they inefficient when they start going away to the really distant trees and some of these distant trees we are going to need for a woodcutter that's going to be up here so let's just put one up here 
and we're just going to extend that road like so. Um, this wood cutter is going to support our chariot maker, and because um, we do need some chariots um, companies on this map. Uh, we are importing enough grain, surprisingly enough, to keep the city going. We don't need fish yet, which is fine. We are selling a little bits of wood, which is fine. Uh, we're keeping the, the bazaar stocked with food, and that's at least helping to evolve our housing rather quickly. We've already got a lot of unemployment. I think with the money that we have now, I would like to start on the import-export of flax. Um, we can import that, so I'll probably start to set up this little area that's over here. We're going to have to destroy some trees to get at this. Um, that's a dock. We're going to have a dock there and a dock there. I don't think we need too many docks, but I will leave this as a possible dock area and then just have fishing wars up all the rest of it. I'll think about it though. And I may even use some of these islands as well to help maybe this one here. I'm not too sure. Anyway, we're just going to keep on going and I'll come back in if anything of it just happens. Okay, so we're starting to expand our industries. We now need to start making linen. Because wood on its own is really not going to help. I mean, they only buy tiddly little amounts every so often, and it's not really useful. So I have put down this little area here. I've moved these houses, the two houses that were down here, I have moved them to this corner so that we can now just um, have one thing there. Um, of course, wood is not very useful because so little of it exists, and they start having to wander quite some distance to get trees. And of course, it takes four lumberjacks to make 100 raw wood. Not like reeds where you can just set two reed gatherers to get 100 reeds. So it goes slower. So we are going to stockpile the wood now that we have used up the supply that 1700 wood all sold. Now we can sell linen to Kadesh, which is at least useful. But it is going to cause us to lose money every so often. We're going to stockpile fish for now just in case someone asks for it. We're not going to make use of it right now because we don't need any more people. We've got 10% unemployment. We don't need any more. Um, in terms of wood supply, I may add in two more wood cutters and leave it at that. So let's just see one, two. Let's just have you go that way instead. And just delete this road a little bit. 1,000 people in the city. I'm going to check on the gods just now. Um, Rat is a little bit upset, but we don't have the money to keep him happy right now. So that's not too useful. So we're going to have no more than eight wood cutters. There's not enough trees here anyway uh, to support much more. Now we are making linen. Once this yard is full of linen, I'm just going to sell off to Kadesh. We've already got that trade route open, so we might as well make use of it. Uh, in terms of shrines, let's just put down one shrine to Ra right there. Now that should keep him happy because he is the patron god. Uh, we don't need them perfectly happy right now, but we do need to start making money. What's our unemployment like? 11% uh, rather, it's not too good. We have copper to sell, which is good, and this guy's stockpiled on wood, which is even more useful. I think it's time to start bringing copper down here, because uh, I think we can sell that. Who is it to? Roarty buys copper, which is very useful. I don't think anyone else buys it. No, we've got a lot of people that sell us copper, but not buy it. Let's have... Um, let's see, where's the best place for this? No, you're just accepting food types, so you might as well just go and get um, a quarter of copper. Because it doesn't matter what foods you accept, you're not going to do anything with them. So we can just have that as more of an inert good. We can just have a quarter square for all of these food types. As long as they're there, it's usable. So we'll get copper and we'll start to export that because we've got no use for it right now. I'm not trading up a military. We don't have the funds to support it right now. So we're starting to make linen. That's the main thing we're doing. A little bit of linen at least uh, keeps that going. And then uh, we can start selling that off when we've got the chance to do so. Kingdom rating might take a plummet soon because we are going to be in a debt anniversary. But if we can uh, open up the trader to Roarte, we can start selling more wood and copper. So uh, let's just keep on going. Uh, I think we've got a good start. Let's just see if we can keep it going together. Okay, so we're starting to expand our operations a bit here. Now, we do need more fish because it is getting used up quite a bit. I have told the bazaar to go and buy fish. So I am expanding my fishing bits with a bit more up here. We're going to expand out over all of this bit and it should be fine. This little set of houses should be enough housing to cover all of the fishing wars we are going to require. Uh, let's just make sure you can get up there. There we go. Now, they can't get to this bit because there is uh, weavers in the way. I'm going to move all of the weavers down and then it will be one, two, three road which will be double road blocked and then I will um, have another I'll leave the, this one where it is but just move these two down once they've all emptied out which is which is fine we'll just put that well right there 
So we are starting to expand everything and we are just needing workers now which is fine which is why we're evolving the houses. Over here we're starting to plan out for our military industry. Um, I'm also going to start bringing weapons down because it is an export. We are going to put the weapons into this yard that accepts fish because again fish is an inert good. Um, we can't import it anyway, we can't do that little import trick with foods that we can't produce. Um, so we are just going to uh, have the weapons come down here. They only bring down one weapon at a time so it is extremely slow. At this point now we just need to evolve our house and get it all stable and I think we should be fine with all of that. Uh, we do need more money. We have actually got a lot of money all of a sudden. This uh, dude here will make chariots so we will just put that there. With the money we've got we can just put down the academy as well. Like so. And then we can probably get one charity or company but I'll wait for the next sales of stuff to go through before we do that. So at this point I have turned off flax imports, we're going to have to let the flax run out first before we can um, get rid of it entirely and start moving these things around just the way I would like it but that's fine. Once all these fishing boats up here are built I am deleting this ship right and replacing it with a third dock. We're going to need all the docks. Don't think I'm going to need to go onto this uh, island at all so it should be fine. If needed I can just get rid of that fishing boat there. I put a thing there and then we've got another three boats that we can put down. It'll get rid of the trees but that's not a problem. We're eventually going to outstrip the amount of trees that we get, uh, the amount of wood that we can sell so it's not a problem. So yeah, let's just keep on going. At this point we just need to start to grow the city. Uh, I'm not going to build on this that little island here because that just requires taking out a dock which I don't want and um, not really much use going there. But we can go there because it's not going to affect anything, it's just more fishing boats. So yeah, let's just keep on going and see what we can do with um, the city, yeah. Oh, what's this? The Tyre, it's the people of Tyre are losing hope for famine has struck Tyre and its people are starving. We need to send 700 baskets of grain, that's rather interesting. We do need to stockpile that grain. Uh, down here I have uh, built out another common block here. And that should be more than enough. Now can we get another 400 grain from somewhere? Are we able to, we're still able to import that amount, that's fine. We have gone into a bit of debt because we started to import pottery, which wasn't a good idea, but we did have to do that. Do we get pottery from there as well? So now, men affairs now selling us grain, pottery and flax. That's a lot. What do I have to do? I think we can start to make some of our money back by exporting some excess weapons. As long as there's weapons down here it's fine because they won't go to get it up here. I've also gone ahead and put down two more wood cutters just to try and start using up some of this wood supply. Because I think that'll be good. I'm also just going to put a couple of houses there. I'm going to move the, the position to here rather than having it there because then I can have those houses. And what was that? Applies is now possible with the grain request. We'll just send that off. There we go. And we will continue to import grain and I will uh, think about that stuff later. We have sold what's that, eight weapons. So we actually are able to buy up eight weapons. It's not individual but they only get it in individual amounts. So we have sold out all those weapons. We can just uh, let them get again. Uh, down here I've also put down another housing block uh, as I just said. Um, it is an inverted version because I can't get the, the water supply there so I have to put it down there instead which is not too much of a problem. I don't think we're going to need too many more housing right now. We are getting a lot of people coming in and solving our unemployment, uh, our employment issues rather. I might start to work on other industries. I can do import export of gems and luxury goods. I know it's not worth a lot but we do need to import gems at some point anyway. I can also start working on importing the granite that we also require. But let's just have that there. We could have put granite right there. I've got three yards over here that are getting it, so that's not a problem. Let's now open up the trade it to Wast, which sells more flax, grain, and, and they also sell granite, which is also very useful. We'll just import that. What other trade routes do we have? We've, also, we've opened up all of our Egyptian trade routes, uh, so we've got that going. I'm not too sure if we're going to need Timna. Um, I'm not too sure if we can get gems from anywhere else. Um, no, I'm also going to start to import... In fact, let's just set this to import to maintain any level of food. We'll just import all that. And I'll just let them do their thing right here. So we are going to start to import other resources, start to expand in our industries and all that. I think we're doing quite well. I do need to get more flax imports going. I'm going to have to move that later. What I will probably do is I'll have the flax get stored here and all the linen there separately. And I will increase our linen production later once we've got the opportunity to do that. And I will probably start to move it along this bit here just to get some of the cotton out of here. But I think we're doing well, we're starting to evolve our house. And these guys are getting access to stuff because of this guy, uh, this person teleporting, which is not a problem right now. 
So let's just keep on going and see if we can uh, continue to build up our military because that's what we need to do now. We've got 14 uh, chariots, uh, charioteer companies which is not too bad. So yeah, let's just keep on going. Okay, what's this? Because it's 700 baskets of grain you sent filled the bellies of Tyre, uh, we can now open trade, but then we'll have a look at that. I'm just going to bridge this so they can get some more trees. Uh, Tyre sells gems, incense, wood, and buys pottery. But we can't make pottery. Um, they do sell incense, which we don't need, and they sell which, wood, which we don't need. So I'm not really sure if I'll open up that trade route. We can sell wood to Timna as well as Lynn, they also sell as gems. So I'm probably going to open up trade with Timna rather than Tyre. So not particularly useful. One of those kind of trade routes where it doesn't matter if it's opened or not, it doesn't affect anything. Let's just get these guys buying any food types that come in, because there's grain, lettuce and chickpeas that could be imported, which will be useful. Uh, we're also starting to import the granite now, which is good. We'll get these guys filling up and we'll start to work on building our obelisk. And um, The obelisk is probably just going to go uh, somewhere like... In fact, we can just put it right there. It'll go quite nicely in the centre of our, our settlement here. So we'll put it there. And we'll have the carpenters somewhere here. And the stonemason could just go somewhere random, it doesn't really matter. That's 16 chariots, I think that's time to build another charioteer company. Uh, we'll put it there. And that's sent us into debt, not a problem. That's not going to be too much of an impact for us. We've got lots of water trade though, we're just starting to stuff up. Thanks in fact, it's now time to... Um, is it time? Actually no, let's not. Let's just make sure that there's a, a tree line cleared that I can get to these, this coast and we can just put down um, that. And I can just do one, two. And for now we'll put down... There's another space up there which I'll do later which is not a problem, not a priority right now. We'll just do that and make sure these guys don't burn. So yeah, let's just expand our fishing. Once all the fishing boats are built, I'm just going to get rid of this ship plate. We don't really need it anymore, and I can replace it with another dock, which will start to clear up some of the backlog as well. Let's keep on going. Okay, here's a rather annoying request. It's to satisfy citizens' needs, the city of Wast request that you send 700 jars of oil in 9 months. Now, if you remember from the previous missions, oil is an import only, so we do need to find someone that will sell us oil and import it. Now down here, I'm starting to work on controlling unemployment and the best way to do that is just by building chariot workshops. They don't actually have to be making chariots, but they do take up 30 employees, which is a very good way of sapping up unemployment. So this little district is just going to be for that, um, because I mean, we were at 17% uh, unemployment, is now down to nothing. Now, do we have a source of oil open already? I believe we already do in the form of Kadesh, so let's just import to maintain 800 somewhere. It's going to go here because why not? We'll just accept oil there. It's got no use in the city and uh, we don't really have any reason to use it. Uh, so these guys are fed by this little feeder house, that's not a problem. Uh, Unemployment will come under control with that, which is good. In fact, I think it's a good opportunity to now build this and just get you to get any food types that are available. I'm not too sure if we'll need to evolve them right up. We may need to do that for prosperity because of that requirement, but that's not a concern right now. We've got linen getting made, which is good. Once the obelisk is built, I won't need to worry about this being for granite, so it's not a problem either. These guys are going to have to wander quite a distance, but that's okay. They take forever to get down and back anyway, so not too concerned by the walking distance. They will get back in time, and it'll still be fairly efficient. So we'll import some oil. It is going to be quite expensive, which is not too good. Um, I'll also have to import some gems at some point because I do know that there are some extortion requests that we'll have to fulfil and uh, I don't want to be too late for those. Uh, can I get... No I can't. So let's just... Um... We're in debt, that's from importing the oil, that's not a problem, we can just send that off. And we will just stockpile the oil for uh, any future requests. Let's just um... Do a double roadblock like that. Actually, let's not. Let's not do a double roadblock. If we do that, it will be a problem. We'll just do a firehouse and architect's post. We'll also put down an additional juggler um, thingy just to cover these guys as well. So we're now massively in debt, which doesn't help, but we will not be importing any more else. We now just need to work on selling linen, and hopefully we will be able to get out of the hole that we've suddenly found ourselves in. Let's just keep on going and see if anything comes out of that request of oil.
Okay, that's quite useful because we sent the seven jar 700 jars of oil to Wast. We are getting some free granite. That's eight blocks of granite, which we did need to import, which is very useful. It just helps with all the overall stuff there. Now, we are importing uh, that at a very slow rate of pace because it only selling us four every so often. And with all the trade back up, it really doesn't help either. So I've gone ahead and just deleted the ship plate and replaced it with another dock. We're now going to start selling some linen, which should hopefully give us some money because we're still in a significant amount of debt. There's some money. Now I think it's because all of our trade quantities have used up. Yep, there's used up. That's pretty much used up. We're selling linen to there, which is good. So that's sold out all the linen for the year to Deshi one fair strip. I think it's time to open up the land trade to Timna and start to um, sell more wood. We do need it, but of course, as you can see, the trees are regrowing very slowly. They're starting to get further away, which now causes these guys to get very inefficient. We are now suddenly out of debt from selling a little bit more wood here and there. So we've got selling, we're selling wood, little bits of it here and there. Not too good, but we're okay. So let's just keep on going and see if we can keep the city stable. We're not really making a lot of money, we're just barely making enough just to keep ourselves in the black every so often. At this point, we just need to now try and grow the city and yeah, just keep everything under control. Okay, so Kadesh is starting to become demanding now. So because Kadesh lusts for glory, we need to send 900 gems in four months. Now, I do know that there are two extortions. There's this one and another one. Uh, it doesn't matter the outcome of the extortions, uh, the trade route will close. So what we're going to do is we're going to slow time right down and see if we've got anyone that sells um, gems. That place is looking to be uh, Timna because they do buy linen and wood. So we're going to import some gems from there. We can't allow Kadesh to invade right now. So we'll import 900 in stockpile. Well, let's just make it a thousand. We've got a lot of money because we started to sell a bunch of stuff, which is good. We've also expanded our linen production. Started to import more flax. In fact, let's just set this to accept only half uh, granite and half flax. And just have all linen go here. So just empty that. We'll just set to accept for now and then accept all linen. And we can start to sell more linen. Because we are going to lose the Kadesh trade route because they were buying linen and selling us oil. But we're going to have to do that from other places. We do have a stockpile of oil which is good. But we now need to think about trying to import some gems and keep a Kadesh at bay. We should be able to do that before the time limit runs out. And by that time we should have a nicely developed army. It's going quite slowly because we're not building as many chariots as I would like. Let's just um, do this, move that over, and then do that. So start to produce chariots a little bit more quickly, start to build up this army, because we are running out of time before we uh, have to defend some attacks. So yeah, I'll send off the gems when the gems import from Timna. There we go, they're all going to come in. So I'll send them off, and I'll come back in later if anything of interest happens. Okay, here's another extortion. Kadesh lust for glory again, and they want 20 weapons in four months. Now, I can tell you that regardless of whether you comply, fulfill it late, or refuse, the trade route to Kadesh will shut down. Now, because this is going to be a pretext for an attack, regardless of whether we fulfill it or not, we're just not going to pay this extortion because it will give us basically two years to fill out our army completely. So, we are not going to pay that extortion because even if you comply, the trade route shuts down, you get attacked and you just waste all the load of weapons. If you fulfill it late, i.e. within the two year extension, it still results in an attack and the trade route shutting down, and refusal still results in an attack. So regardless of what we do, we are gonna lose this trade route to Kadesh, which means we are gonna lose our source of importing oil and selling linen. It's not a problem because we can sell quite a bit of linen to Timna, and we're also importing gems to make luxury goods, which we are gonna to start to sell very soon. But we do need a bigger stockpile than this before we can consider that. Now I've gone ahead and just helped the gods get a little bit more happier with two shrine walls. We've got the money. Um, we've also stopped the export of wood because we just can't sell enough anymore. It's causing a bit of congestion I think with the docks. We're trying to buy a little bits of uh, wood which is not really helpful. So I'm going to stockpile the wood for a little while and then just see how that goes. Um, once the, the weapons stop getting sold that will help as well. We've got plenty of linen in stockpile which is good. We'll start to stockpile that a bit more. That will just turn off that export as well. We've got 16 unemployed people, which is good. We'll just get rid of that. And we can replace it with a town palace somewhere. Now, I am going to put the town palace a little out of the way just because it is a big building. I don't want to put down too many more industries. And I'll just put down a tax collector in both these blocks. And we'll just increase the wage rates a little bit. And we'll put the tax rate up to 
seven. Now every house is at um, ordinary cottage. We're not at the population target. We're not at prosperity yet. Now it has been dropping because of low funds, which is not a problem. That's just down to all the exports, really. Let's just sell luxury goods for a little while. I know it's not really worth it because it's only a 30% a uh, 30 demon profit, but it's not a problem. Yes, we've got this 20 weapons, but we're not sending them off. So we'll start to build up our, our military. We've got four charioteer companies. We should have a fifth and uh, potentially an, uh, an infantry company as well, but that's not a concern right now. Uh, culture's not going to be there because we need dentists, but that's not a problem. Uh, we don't need to provide too many services, so I'll just go ahead and put down the, the courthouses. I'll just put a dentist in the space just to provide that. And uh, we'll start to take this up. Then prosperity, kingdom's all we need, and the monument as well. So let's keep on going. The attacks are nearly going to start. Okay, here's a rather interesting request. Uh, Ejitoy is in need of 2100 planks of wood in 8 months. Well, we do have that because we have been st stockpiling that for a while, but that's a lot of wood. Uh, the deadline passed and we're waiting another bit of time for that ex uh, extra for that um, weapons request. So we'll just put down the 5th charioteer company and that will be all of our charioteers. We're going to uh, then put down the last fort, which will be infantry, which is going to go... Well, I'll wait until the charioteer companies flesh out, then I'll put down the that stuff there. Now we're going to stop getting weapons because we need to let that run out so we don't need to export that anymore. We are short of money but that's not a problem. We have just been building a lot. If I'm short in employees, which I don't think we are a little bit short, sure. I'm going to delete a chariot maker that gives us 30 workers. So I don't think we're going to need too much more fishing. Uh, we have plenty of fish in the system. If we stop giving them uh, imported food it will be fine because then I don't need to worry too much about the imports. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to stop importing lettuce and we'll just focus on the, the grain and chickpeas which will be a bit more useful. So we don't need to do that, we can just say to get half of copper instead and we should be able to sell a bit more. Um, linen's ready for export I think. Yes it is, we'll just set that to export and over zero. We are going to need to import um, beer to get this up. The culture's there because of all the stuff I've been doing. It may drop because of various things, but that's not a problem. Can I get a booth there? I could put a booth there, uh, or a bandstand there rather, but I don't want to. We will power put a booth there and a booth there. That'll just make sure that they don't um, have any problems with the, the coverage dropping for any reason. So yeah, at this point now we're just importing the gems, start to make luxury goods, just trying to make sure we've got something to export, start to tax, which also helps. We'll flesh out our military and we should be ready for those Hittite attacks very soon. Okay, so we had another request from Ijatai for 1900 planks of wood and doing so has opened up a trade route there. We've also just had to set off more oil, which we can't replace. So what does Ijatai do? They buy uh, wood. They also sell more granite, which I don't think we need because we are nearly there, so it's not a problem. They also sell a bunch of chickpeas, I suppose. Actually, you know what? I can only import 6,500 granite, uh, grain rather, but I can import 8,000 chickpeas. We're going to open up U. We're going to stop the grain imports. We're just going to set this import to maintain zero. I did tell the lettuce imports, but one of the requests from Ejitoy gave, gave us a gift of uh, lettuce, so I had to do that. We're just going to set this to have... Uh, let's just set this to yeah a half of chickpeas and just no more grain. Just accept grain, but we're going to just start giving everyone chickpeas now rather than the grain. Uh, because we can get a lot more chickpeas than um, anything else. Now, I am going to... Uh, we do have um, them there, so it's not a problem. Let's just move this back a bit. And you can get uh, many more chickpeas. You can just be set to get maximum chickpeas. And we can just have this as an acceptor for various things. Now, are we using grain in this city? Nope, we should get rid of that grain so we don't have any more use for it. And we'll start to import the chickpeas. Um, because chickpeas we can get a lot more of. And if we have two styles of granite, that helps a lot. So more traders opening up. We have sold off a load of wood, which has set our sky, uh, funds skyrocketing. We're going to just stop that again, because we don't have any more space for it. We're not going to accept any more weapons there. We're going to set that to just accept all fish. Start to move things around, just make things easier for us. So we're starting to get the granite over here. We're nearly there. So it's not too much of a problem. We just need to stockpile the, the wood again. Now, if we got all five charioteer companies filled out, we do. How much longer do we have on this request? Five months. I don't think we'll get a full infantry for it, but let's just... 
have a go anyway. Now, are you going around the forts? That's interesting. We will put that fort there then. Uh, the artists are going to buy more copper. That's actually very useful because I could sell 2,500, which makes me consider that I just um, change stuff around a bit more. In fact, we're not going to put the obelisk there. We're going to put it somewhere else. In fact, we can move that out of the way. The obelisk is going to go there. And we'll actually, no. Obelisk stays where it is. And here we're going to have something else. I'm not sure what we're going to put there. Actually, let's just leave that, because once the granite is no longer needed, I can just um, turn that yard in. And that's already accepting flax, it's not a problem really, if it's just set it to that. So yeah, we're nearly about to run out of time for that uh, request to, well, that extortion to Kadesh. We'll just have to see what happens when we fail that request. Okay, so our trade is now closing because you normally courted danger, but you refused to send 20 weapons to Kadesh. Uh, the trade has been shut down, that's fine. And immediately after that we're getting told that in 10 months we're going to be attacked by a Hittite army. Now that's going to be a little bit difficult because we don't have any walls and towers, so we are going to have to fight this directly and just hope that these troops are enough to defeat them. Um, I think we've got all the granite now. Yes, we do. We do not need to import any more granite. So once all that fills up there and then this is empty, I'll put down the obelisk. We will just put down the Carpenter's Guild there. And we'll just put down the Stonemason's Guild um, here. So we'll start to prepare for the monument. The monument's the only thing that we need to do now. The culture's there. We just need to evolve the housing a little bit more and we should be fine. In fact, since we've got the pottery, let's just start providing pottery. We've also started to import a bit of beer, which will help as well. Now, hopefully we don't need to evolve all housing up to the required level. Um, I don't know how far we need to go up to get it to the required 40, but we'll see. Um, if I can get away without importing papyrus, that'll help a lot. So yeah, let's just keep on going. Start to move things around. We're going to start getting copper into here. This is just going to accept all food types. We don't need that. Um, and this will just be flax. This will be pottery and beer. And this will just be linen and all that stuff. Well, I'll think about it as time goes on. So yeah, invasion's on the way. Can we beat it without any walls and towers? We'll have to see. Okay, so the invasion's going to be nearly here. It's just going to happen in one month. Now, I do know the first invasion comes from over here. So we are going to prepare for it in advance by putting all of our chariots right here. Or thereabouts. Um, is that facing the right way? It is. We'll just have everyone hold uh, engaged nearby enemies right here and we'll also just throw in our uh, infantry as well to do some damage. Because uh, they are quite strong, we know that from Biblos, they are very strong enemies. We were only able to fight them off in Biblos with walls and towers, but this time we don't have the luxury of walls and towers. So they're going to be here one month better conquest, they are going to attack from there. Um, everyone's up to spacious homestead, now do we need to provide beer? We don't. So we don't need to provide beer to evolve the housing, so we are just going to stick at this level. That should get us up to 3,000 people. I may evolve one block just a little bit further just to be absolutely certain of the population requirement. But it's a good thing we don't need beer. That's just hit 3,000. Uh, 35, 40. So really it's just kingdom rating and the monument, which will be done very shortly because we have all the granite. I'm actually going to put down the family mansion somewhere. Let's just put it down here. And start to collect a salary because we are going to need that to get our kingdom rating up. So it is a large, it's a fairly, it's a moderate attack. It's not as large as Biblos, I'll tell you that. It's not as large as Biblos, but it's still a fairly devastating attack. So it comes from the north. And um, yeah, we'll just have to see if we can fight them off. Let's have a go at it. Okay, I think we defeated them. Let's just have a quick check. Uh, no one's attacking the city. That's good. We managed to just fend them off quite nicely with all of those troops there. I think it held by the fact that we attacked all the weaker enemies first, so the chariots came in quite demoralised. We have lost most of our infantry. They will recover in time with the weapons, which is not a problem. Population is pretty much there. I don't want to increase it too much because it will affect our culture rating, but I would rather... Um, I should know. What we're going to do is we're going to just set beer to stop importing. We're just going to get rid of all of that beer because we do not need it in this city. 
which is a good thing. And since we've got all of the the granite that we require, we are going to go ahead. Oops, not do that. We are going to put down the small obelisk right there. So the last little bit of granite will come over here, and then we can just delete all of that. We don't need it anymore. I will leave one yard in case um, someone gifts us it from sending off oil. I think last request for oil will come around every so often. But here we go, the obelisk is nearly there, it's, it's just got to be built nice, so not a problem. We now just need to get a kingdom rating up, which isn't too difficult. I, I may evolve a block, I'm not too sure how I'm going to do it. I may go back to importing the beer again, but we'll see. So let's just keep on going, the mission's nearly over, hopefully we don't get attacked again. Okay, that didn't take too long, the obelisk is already complete, so we've pretty much won the mission. Um, at this point, I've just tried to get my kingdom rating up. Um, culture's there, population's there, the prosperity's there, this will go up very shortly. I've got a bit of unemployment, which is not a problem. We could just put down some cherry, because I've got ahead and put down a festival square. It might mess up this area, but that's not a problem. We'll just put down two of those, and I can just um, make sure of the, the coverage by doing that. Which is fine. I must have just touched the bottom of the map there. So at this point now, all I have to do is rush the kingdom rating before we get attacked again, because I know that there's going to be another attack. But I want to make sure that we don't have to go through it. There's like king the kingdom rating went up again because we had to send some copper off. But that's fine. I accepted the gift of grain. This block here is except as buying grain if it happens to be uh, gifted to us. But yeah. So at this point, we are just get a kingdom rating up slowly but surely, and um, just every twelve months send it off a gift. And hopefully, Ra might bless us as well with some um, with festivals to him. So yeah, I'll come back in when we're nearly at a kingdom rating target. It's not long, folks. I don't think we're going to be able to win before this attack. We've got seven months until the next Hittite army attacks us. I think it's the, the second and only remaining invasion. Uh, Raz going to blaze trade partners, which is completely useless. I don't want that. Um, earlier, just before I came back in, Manifair increased the amount of wood that we're going to buy. So this doesn't help. This only just throws everything off because now everyone's going to buy a whole lot more items than we wanted. Um, are we importing oil from somewhere? Um, let's just have a quick look. Or is that just oil we've never used? I think it's just oil we've never ever had to send off, so it's not a problem. Um, kingdom rating, let's have a look. Kingdom rating 73. It would be nice if Ra gave me blessings in the direction of kingdom rating. That would be a lot nicer, but I don't think he's too interested, so we'll just have to see. Um, I will come back in when we're near that invasion because, well, we might as well show it. It's important. So I'll just have to make sure I don't let in my kingdom rating to go above. Uh, 90 until the invasion's here. So let's go back in when we're near the invasion, folks. Okay, so that invasion's gonna be here in 1 1 Bento Concourse. I have moved everyone over apart from my infantry. I don't want to spend too much time replacing this because we will need it in the next mission. Um, the next mission is a fairly interesting mission which we'll not talk about here. It's just interesting. You'll find out soon enough why it's interesting. Um, since we're not accepting any uh, more beer, we've just got rid of it all, we're just going to set this to go and get half weapons. And once there's a big supply of it, we can just sell that too. So it's just an invasion that we've got to get through. Our kingdom rate is nicely 73, it won't get up to 90 without too much prodding. But we would rather get through an attack first. Let's see how we do. And we didn't do too badly on that one. We lost a couple of charioteers, which are easy enough to replace. We lost a couple there, yeah. Lost a few charioteers, but that's not a problem. And that pretty much equates to all the attacks on this map. So, we survived. We didn't do too badly. That seemed weird, because in Biblos, they were really strong. But, um, in this one, they're pathetically weak. It must be that they did send too many chariots this time, and that's why we were able to defeat them quite quickly. So yeah, at this point now, it's just a rush for kingdom rating. I'll just come back in when the mission's won, or about to be won. Okay, and that's the mission pretty much won. I've just got to send one more gift to get our kingdom rating above the 90 requirement. It's at 88 right now. So we've got culture, prosperity, and our obelisk. We've got the population. A nice little port city with two 9x9s nine pretty much attached to each other, supporting our various industries here with... Copper being exportable was selling weapons as well and all that kind of stuff. We didn't really sell too much. I think we just sort of stopped. Well, we still sell quite an, uh, uh, an amount of stuff. It was mostly linen 
and we are importing flax to do that and all that kind of stuff. So nothing too major and that's going to be good. Down here basically an employment dump of chariot makers that don't actually work but they consume 30 employees and just keep our, our, our prosperity in check from high unemployment. Got five, um, another request for oil came through. Uh, we've got five charioteers and one infantry. Now the reason we've got one infantry is in the next mission there is a carryover troops functionality where we're going to take one of the charioteers and the infantry company over to the next map. Now the company that's going to be taken over is the best one. So let's just have a look. Is there any ones that are better than veterans? No. So one of these at random will be selected. Probably an internal number will determine which one it is. We'll get one charioteer company in the infantry for in the next mission for carryover troops and uh, we will go into detail about that later. So all I have to do now is send any gift and our kingdom rating will be there. I'll just make sure I save before we do that. And yeah, let's just send it off. There we go. So I built Sumer, the first mission in Ramses II campaign, built up a nice military and we've developed a nice poor city. Let us proceed to the next mission. A job well done. Our great pharaoh, Ramses II, did not err when he chose you to oversee the commercial and military development of this land. But danger rides the wind. Hittite armies have again arisen to contest our rightful control of this most valuable region. They have indeed, and we're going to be fighting off against them in the next mission, which we're not going to go into too much detail because it's quite an interesting little mission. Culture rating 35 for painting much better. I could have gone put that higher by building watches, but I didn't want to use the linen. I just wanted to sell it. Uh, prosperity just about there with the housing. Uh, Kingdom was nicely met as well, as well as the funds and all that. Didn't take us too long, we also had to build that obelisk as well. So that was Sumer, and in the next video we're going to head to Kadesh, which is a very interesting mission if you want to head and see that one. Just click the card on the screen. Thanks for watching this video guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.